Hello, in this exercise we're going to estimate the autoregressive model of order p with maximum likelihood. Okay, so to this end we will talk about a little bit about the theory, uh, how to derive the conditional likelihood, and then we focus on the computational implementation in MATLAB. That is, we're going to write a function that actually computes the log likelihood, and then we write another function that optimizes this likelihood. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so we are considering um, the ARP model with a constant and a linear trend. We have P coefficients here and a white noise process, but we do assume now a concrete distribution, in this case, the normal distribution, okay? Now we put um, everything here into the uh, regression matrix um, uppercase Y, all right, and then um, you can see that here we also have this white noise assumption. Now, if the sample distribution is known, um, it has some probability distribution, okay, um, and in our case, since we know this is normally distributed um, and sums of normally distributed variables are also normally distributed, we actually can derive this analytically and we will do this in this exercise. Now. If we can do that, an estimation with maximum likelihood is feasible and possible. So what do we need to do? Um, we need to decompose the joint distribution of y1, y2 up to y uppercase t, uh, given um, the coefficient, uh, the, coefficient um, the, the vector of parameters and the standard error of the white noise process. And we decompose this, that is we condition the first observation or we have the likelihood for the first observation and here we only need to know the parameters and then we can do this conditional argument that once we know a conditional on the first observation we can derive the um, likelihood of the second observation and then conditional on all the previous observations we can derive the likelihood of the observation of the last observation as well. Okay, so this is what uh, a decomposition in those conditional uh, probability density functions. Now taking the log, okay, this is times, 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 the log makes this a sum. So the log likelihood is basically the sum over all those contributions. Okay, so we, in a sense, have this first observation that is conditioned only on the parameters and all other ones are conditioned on previous data. Now let's denote the values that maximize the log likelihood with a tilde um, and um, one can show um, or you should know from your econometrics uh, classes that maximum likelihood estimators uh, are under very general assumptions uh, or do have an asymptotic normal distribution. Okay and the And the covariance matrix of the normal distribution, uh, which we need to compute standard errors for our uh, theta tilde and sigma u tilde, um, these are or these stem from the so-called asymptotic information matrix or from the inverse of the asymptotic information matrix. Now recall that the asymptotic information matrix is basically the Hessian of the log likelihood. Well, not exactly the Hessian, but minus the expectation of the Hessian uh, divided by the sample size. Okay, so we can compute this matrix by having a look at the second derivatives um, and then divide this by t and take the minus, take the inverse right here, and then we get our standard errors. Okay, now let's dive into this exercise okay first let us consider the AR1 model okay uh, just with a constant um, which looks like this and now let's derive the exact log likelihood function okay and we assume stationarity uh, covariance stationarity because the uh, coefficient here is inside the unit circle so the first observation y1 is a random variable and it has a mean and variance okay so the expectation of the first observation is equal to the expectation of the AR1 process and this is given that we have a constant 1c over 1 minus theta. 
the variants of uh, y1 is then also equal to the variance of the r1 process and this is sigma squared u divided by 1 minus theta squared. Now since the error terms are Gaussian, y1 is also Gaussian. Okay, so y1 is normally distributed with expectation c over 1 minus theta and sigma square u divided by 1 minus theta square. And the PDF, okay, so f1 y1 given my parameters is the normal PDF, okay? So this is 1 over square root of 2 pi, okay? So times the standard error, so let's, we need to take the square root of this expression here. So times sigma u divided by the square root of 1 minus theta squared. Okay, times the exponential, and this is then one minus one half, and we need to do take the variable, subtract the mean, and take the square. Okay. And here again, we need to divide by the variance. Okay, so this is sigma square u divided by one minus theta squared. Okay, so this is the distribution of the first observation. Now, the second observation conditional on the first one is given. So y2 is given by c plus theta times y1 plus u2. Okay, so conditional on y1, y is the sum of this deterministic terms plus the normally distributed term. Okay, so y2 conditional on y1 is normally distributed, mean is the deterministic terms, and the variance is only coming from u2, so sigma square u. Okay, and the PDF for that, so F2, Y2 given Y1 theta sigma square U is one over square root two pi divided by the standard error. Okay, so sigma U this, um, times the exponential minus one half so on top, y2 minus the mean, so minus c minus theta times y1. And this needs to be square and below divide by the variance, okay? And we need to close the exponential function. Okay, so the joint density of y2 and y1, theta and sigma square u, is therefore um, F2, which is Y2 conditional on Y1 theta sigma square u times F1 Y1 conditional on theta and sigma square u. And if you continue doing that for Y3 conditional on Y2 and Y1, uh, you will actually see that um, the value of y1, y2, yt minus 1 um, for yt um, matters only through the previous value. Okay, so we only need to conditional on the previous value. Okay, and the density, that is the, the so the density of yt given the previous value, again, all other ones uh, we don't really need. We, we just need like the previous one because we're in an AR1 model. For an ARP model, you would actually condition on the P, um, P legs here. Okay, so um, 
theta sigma square u is then basically 1 over square root 2 pi times sigma u times the exponential minus 1 half yt minus c minus theta times yt minus 1 squared divided by sigma square u. Okay, note right here, this is basically the residual. Okay, this is the error term. Okay, so this is just the PDF of ut. Okay, so this is the whole idea. Now, the likelihood of the complete sample, so f y t y t y t minus one up to y one given my parameters is then as given in the exercise the joint product okay so f t y t y t minus one theta sigma square u and the log likelihood okay simply taking the log okay log and I'm simply calling this now log L of because it's really only depending on the parameters here and which is then log f1 y1 theta sigma square u plus the sum of t equals 2 up to t log f t y t given y t minus 1 theta sigma square u because we know the analytical expression for the normal distribution so this is minus 1 half times log of 2 pi minus one half times log of sigma square u divided by one minus theta square minus y1 minus c one minus theta or sorry and we need to square this and this is divided then by 2 times sigma square u divided by 1 minus theta squared. So this is basically the log likelihood function of the first observation. And then we have um, uppercase t minus 1 um, of these expressions. They all basically have common stuff like uh, constants. So we have minus t minus one uh, over two times this two pi coefficient there. And we also have minus um, t minus one half times the sigma square u and then we have the t equals 2 to capital T right here y t minus so let me actually no let's keep it this way theta times y t minus 1 we need to square this and sigma square u So this is the exact log likelihood function. Now, coming back to the exercise, let us now regard the value of the first observation as a deterministic um, or equivalently um, its contribution as we go on on time disappears asymptotically. Now let's uh, maximize the conditional log likelihood analytically to get our maximum likelihood estimates log 
plc of theta sigma square u equals minus t minus one half sorry t minus one half times log of two pi so some constant which does not change with my coefficients minus t minus one half times the log of sigma square u and then minus the sum t equals 2 up to t and again as I was saying this is ut okay so this is basically ut squared divided by 2 times sigma square u if we maximize this log likelihood we need to take the derivative with respect to um, theta and now theta is does not influence this term does not influence this term but it has an influence on this term right here okay because it's in the residuals okay again here's the theta but basically so i'm minimizing have a look what what is this this is the sum of squared residuals okay so this is the exact same estimate than we would get with OLS okay so maximizing okay so this is OLS okay again here are the residuals if I maximize but here's a minus so this is the same as I would minimize those residuals now maximizing with respect to Sigma u is a bit different because we also have this term over here and this term so note that the estimator for the variance is different because we not only minimize the sum of squared residuals here and those will give me t minus one terms I also have one more so maximizing with respect to sigma u is a bit different uh, than OLS uh, for OLS I would divide by the effective sample size which is t minus one here and do also one more okay so t minus one minus one and here i would only divide by t minus one okay by the effective sample size okay so with respect to sigma is different from o ols okay so there's a slight difference of course if your sample size is very large it doesn't matter okay Okay, now let's consider the general ARP model. Let us uh, in MATLAB write a function. Let's call this log like RP norm that takes as input x, y, p, and const. And this is supposed to compute the value of the conditional log likelihood. Okay, conditional on the first p observation of a Gaussian ARP model. And here is basically the formula um, which we would then need which is very similar to what we just derived for the AR1 model uh, for ARP we just conditional on, on P observations here and this X uh, contains is, uh, my parameters okay Y is the vector of data uh, P is the number of legs and constant is equal to 1 if I have a constant in the model and equal to 2 if I have a constant and a linear time trend okay let us write this function Okay, so function log like equals log like air p norm for normal distribution. So this is the vector of parameters, data, number of legs, and I might have a constant in the model, and this is my function end. Now let us first get our theta from the vector x here so those are my um, constant linear time trend and ar coefficients okay now sec u let's assume this is basically the the last value okay or let's put it like that so again let me first get the sample size ready here let's create the so this is the sample size 
this is the standard deviation of the error term. And then let's create the matrix of the regression matrix. Again, using this lag, lag matrix. So I have P P lags. And then, so this is create matrix with lagged variables. Then if I have a constant, I need to add this to my regression matrix. So I need to add a column of ones and then Y. Now, if I have both a constant and a linear time trend, I need to also add the um, transpose oh, one to T, but I want this the transpose of that. Okay. Now we need to get rid of, due to this uh, lag matrix, we have NINs in our um, lag matrix, so we need to get rid of some initial observations. So basically my Y is based on P plus one to the last entry. And the same, of course, for my lowercase Y my endogenous variable in the regression or in the model, the left-hand side variable. Okay, then let's compute the um, maximum likelihood residuals here. So this is basically y minus y times theta. Those are the maximum likelihood residuals. Okay, then let's do UU, the sum of squared residuals. Um, this would be then U hat prime times U hat. Okay, this is the maximum likelihood sum of residuals, sum of squared residuals. And then let's compute the conditional log likelihood. Okay, we have the sum of squared residuals right here already. Okay, so the log likelihood, okay, the, this is, let's compute the conditional log likelihood. Okay, so the log likelihood is equals minus log times two times pi times t minus p divided by two minus the log of sec u squared um, times t minus p divided by 2 the minus the sum of squared residuals and I need to divide this by 2 times sec u squared. There you go. This is the log likelihood. This is what the this function will output. Now we will use this function to, we will use a numerical optimization optimizer to maximize this function. Okay. So basically what a numerical optimizer does, it tries, uh, tries in a clever way, different values for this X. So different thetas, different sec u's, and then we will compute given a sigma u and given a theta, we will compute the log likelihood. And what I like to do if I'm um, optimizing a, a function, I also want to um, take care of those edge cases. Okay, so what if the uh, something happens here that this is actually not a number? Okay, so log likelihood, or um, this is the or symbol. Okay, so what if it is infinity? Okay. Or what if it is not real? Okay, so if it is complex and there is this function is real that can check whether my log like is a real number. And this little symbol tells me 
not, okay? So whenever that happens, I'm simply setting this to a very small number, okay? So if anything goes wrong, set value to very small. And that's it. Okay, so this is my log likelihood function. Let's save this. Okay. Now let's write another function, ARP ML, that takes as inputs again my data, uh, how many legs, uh, if I have a constant or linear term, or both a constant and a linear time trend, and alpha as a significance value. And then it's supposed to compute the maximum likelihood estimates numerically by maximizing my conditional log likelihood function. And it also should output the standard errors by computing the asymptotic covariance matrix. Okay, and we will save everything in a structure. So let's do this. Okay, so function ml, arp ml, yp const and alpha. Now we need to maximize our log likelihood function. Numerical optimizers are usually defined as minimizers. Okay, so, and uh, there are several that you can use in uh, MATLAB. More or less, you have two categories. You have on the one hand, gradient based um, optimizers, which are very fast and very accurate if the functions are well behaved and they, you can actually compute the gradient nicely or simulation based um, optimizers, which can uh, perform often better if the problem at hand, the function is, uh, has many ridges, uh, is not well defined, but it uh, usually takes longer. Okay, in our case, uh, everything is fine. So we can, for instance, use um, uh, f min unc. If you have MATLAB's optimization toolbox or global optimization toolbox, you have a whole battery of optimizers that you can try out here. Okay, and um, Again, all those optimizers are defined as minimizers, um, which finds the minimum of negative log likelihood. Okay, don't forget that we need to uh, focus on the negative. And you do that, um, first of all, I'm creating the function, okay? And I'm using a so-called anonymous function here that is uh, using this add symbol. Um, I want to add, uh, I want to include he, the x and this is going to minus one times log like rp norm x y p const. Okay, so I'm simply creating a function ha a handle here. Let me run this command. Okay, and you can actually see, all right, this is a so-called function handle. Okay, it has one input, the x, and this will be in here. All other inputs, y, p, and const are taken from the rest of the function. Okay, so this is uh, use function uh, handle to hand over additional parameters, that's it, okay? And then the command f min unc, okay, it requires a function, which is now my f, and x0, which are starting values. Okay, and if we have a look at the help to this, Okay, find minimum of unconstrained multivariate functions. Okay, there's also, of course, something for constraint if you have bounds on your problem, well, but we, we don't have that. Well, actually we do maybe for, for instance, the sigma uh, as supposed to be positive. Now, what can this function give, um, provide me? Well, x is, you can have a look here, what it is. 
Um, so X is basically the optimized um, parameters. FVAL is the minimized function value. And then there's an exit flag if everything went right or not. Then there are some additional outputs. And there's also the gradient and the hashing. So this is quite nice because remember, we need the, the hashing of the log likelihood, right? The second derivatives to compute the standard errors. So let me copy this output arguments over here. Okay, so x will be my optimized parameters. This is my function value and the hashing. I still need some initial values. And here, basically, you should try many different ones, okay? And it's always good maybe to also randomize those, okay? So how many do I need? I need p ar coefficients. I have this constant that um, terms and the one um, standard error of the white noise process, okay? So I'm simply randomly drawing this from the normal distribution. Okay, and then I'm computing this here. Okay. Let's see whether or not this works. Okay, so let's load in a data set, the AR4, which is AR4 data. And let's do Y AR4 data. Now let's do four legs one constant and the alpha 0 0.05. Now let's see whether or not we did everything correctly. Oh, already, so this was the function handle. This was the initial values and let's see what errors we get. Okay, something wrong in our log likelihood function in line 17. Um, something does not work over here. So how can you test that? Okay, so in a sense, we do have our x0 all right. Okay, so for our log likelihood function, we need an x. So let's put x equals x0. Let's see whether or not we get any mistakes here. This looks okay. Uh, okay. I see. Yes, of course, this is a matrix and I want to get rid of initial observations in rows. Okay, so I need to carry over the columns here. Okay, let me go again. This looks good. This looks also good. And now let me see the sum of squared residuals. All right, and the log likelihood is also computed. Okay. All right, I think I fixed the error. Let's go again. Okay, this looks good. Local minimum found. Okay, completed because the size of the gradient is less than the value of the optimality tolerance. All right, we succeeded. Now let us uh, put this everything into a nice format. Okay, so let's um, put the maximum likelihood estimates. Those were the one up to p plus constant. So those are the estimated coefficients. Um, the sigma, that was the last one. Now the estimated covariance matrix was minus the inverse of the Hessian of the log likelihood because we are minimizing. So we are already have the minus in here. So we sing simply need to do inverse of the Hessian. Okay, so this is then the estimated covariance matrix of coefficients. So the, let's call this a sick. This is then the square root of 
let's focus on the diagonal of this matrix. So those, this is the estimated standard error vector. And sig theta tilde is then sig 1 plus p plus constant. And OK, what else do we need? Oh, maybe the effective sample size. size. Uh, the value of the log likelihood, which is then minus the function value. OK, so this is the value of maximized log likelihood. The t statistic, which is theta tilde, is a vector. I want to divide this element wise by the standard error. Okay, so this is the t statistic, the critical value from um, t inf um, of divided by 2, and this is then tf minus p. So this is the critical value from uh, t distribution. Oh, of course, I forgot the minus p minus const. Now the p-values is t pdf t statistic, and again the same degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is the p-values from t distribution. Um, the confidence interval, let's compute this, so theta ci, theta tilde, now this critical value is actually in the negative one, so I need a plus here, so this is t crit times zig theta tilde and the upper bound is then so let's put in a vector here okay comma put in the minus in here okay and let's store into output structure Let's save this and let's call this ARPML.m. Okay, so in the last exercise we did uh, ARPOLS and this is now ARPML. And now let's do the last part of the exercise. Um, let's take this data set, the one with simulated data, and let's do ML equals a r p m l y um, for one constant and 0 0.05 okay let's run this oh, so no that's not y that is a r for data oh there's something wrong um, a r p m l i don't have T. Okay, um, let's simply there. I don't have the T, so let's do T up here, the original one, like that. Okay, okay, and then I get my results. Okay, and once you've finished, I always advise that you go back into your to your functions here and tell exactly what you're doing. So this is maximum likelihood estimation of a Gaussian ARP model. Okay, so these are the inputs here and these are the outputs. All right, and I'm also calling another function that actually computes the log likelihood function. Okay, so this is the comment for this function here and here Okay, so this computes the conditional log likelihood function of this model. This is the call. Um, this, this is the 
vector of parameters, vector of data, so the inputs, and this only outputs the value of the Gaussian log likelihood function, okay? All right, okay. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this useful. Bye-bye.